back for another Exos Heroes episode. So in today's episode, we're going to take a look at the top 10 Black Fate cores that we have right now as of today for Exos Heroes. So what I have for you actually is a top half and a top bottom. So we'll start with the top bottom in terms of our top Black Fate cores. Okay, so... The bottom half of this list starts off with FC Scarlet. So it's not about the bikini actually. It's more on what she brings to your team. Especially if you're a beginner. If you're a mid-level player. Um, she is actually fantastic in your PvP. And also in your Pv PvE actually matches. So let's take a look at her skills at first. So again, she has Manny Utilization, which is actually very, very good. Increase attack um, depending on the ally's mana account. Then gain one mana if mana count of all allies is 10 or more on own turn. So again, she is good. With, she also has um, Shell Investigator against Monomus. But the one that, that really um, sets, sets her apart is actually Flop Flop. The, this is actually one one of the you know one of the abilities that could give you control over your enemies and with her she has the ability to give this through an aoe um skill which is her s1 and her s2 okay but um down here she also has another passive which is baptism by fire to increase attack by 10 percent for each living front row ally hero except the caster every round okay front low for every living front row ally hero so this team that she's going to be in should be heavy on the front row okay so also she has summer's blessing which actually gives you immunity to frost damage which is actually very very crucial indeed okay so let's go through her skills so she has actually um again an aoe for s1 so it deals 178 percent damage to all enemies which is three mana cost and her next skill would be her s2 so passionate heart heat of havoc so it's a required mana five it's a burst skill and it deals three five seven percent damage to all enemies so they this kit of her actually is well suited for starters, well suited for mid-level players. Um, that is why I put her here in the bottom half of the list. Okay, moving on to our next. Okay, now we have here Chatty. So one of my favorites actually um, in terms of artwork, in terms of um, actually her kit. She is actually underrated as well, uh, but she has one of the best kit for a black fc so let's go through her kit so we'll start off with protect three so she grants share health to an ally with the lowest maximum health similar to what garf gives she is actually she actually has dragonite blessing as well and she has dimension leap okay so dragonite blessing she is actually very good or the dragon for any day that you can bring her please bring her that is why she's here in terms of her fc being one of the top 10 so increase damage dealt to dragons with dragon scale order activated by 250 percent overtime effect decreases the enhanced dragon fang effect used by nature element dragon of order by 20 percent okay that is why she's here Dimensional Leap, she has a new passive, increase dodge for self by 40 and attack by 1000. Uh, when attack removes all Dimensional Leap, mark on self after a successful dodge, stacks up to 4 times. Okay, let's go through her S1, her skills, so Mighty Chessy, so its my requirement is 3, increases on maximum health by 60% for 8 turns. Okay, grants an equal barrier to... 17% of own maximum health to all allies for 12 turns. That is why you bring her the dragon because of this skill. So she gives a lot of support to your heroes, to 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 your team, especially when the dragon comes. She can you can actually just also bring her in PVE. She's actually very good there. 
for BB for PvP, she can be good for beginners and for mid-level players if you want to bring her along in PvP. And for her S2, you have their their deals 375 damage to one enemy, afflicts the target with stun for six turns. So, but her S1 is actually what she's actually known for giving protection, giving shields to to her party or to her team. So again, very good skill with the dragon, very good skill as well in terms of uh, PVE. And um, let's let's if you happen to bring her in PVP, let's hope that that you don't encounter a lot of uh, barrier destroyers like uh, FC Iris. You have FC Shell, and now we have FC G. Okay, let's move on to the next. Okay, what we have here is FC Brook. So Brook is actually one of the. I still, uh, when I think of her, she was one of at, at one time dominated PvP because of her relentless attacks. I'll explain everything later, but let's go first to her counters or her passive. So she has counter two counters upon taking damage. She also is good with dragon hunt uh, with, with the dragon with dragon dragon hunter blessing. Increased damage dealt to dragons with dragon scale of chaos by act activated by two hundred fifty percent. Decreased damage from raging breath by seventy percent, and all of those dragon anti abilities. Okay, so she also has barrier will so triggers when seventy percent of own maximum health is taken. Re reduce all damage received, including current damage, by 50% for two turns. Increases all damage received by two turns by 30% for three turns. So, this is what actually she is uh, known for. So, Angry Lamb, her her core reversed passive. So, if the caster has a removable buff, recovery, positive effect applied, attacks together with an ally when an ally attacks together with an ally when the ally attacks once every turn so as soon as as a single ally attacks and she has angry lamb she can actually attack uh, with her basic attack to, uh, after that ally attack so this is what she's known for in terms of being relentless in terms of her attacks so this is good also you bring her the dragon for this one um you combo you combo her with fc chatty that is why both of them are here and both of them will be able to help each other fc chatty will be able to give her her shield and also for first dragon if you have a first dragon uh, for, sorry if you have a first guardian on your team for the dragon they could also give her a shield or a barrier as well okay so for her S1, it's a super sheep smash dealing 225% damage to one enemy. Resets the turn if a target dies. So it's an active skill. Then the next would be your S2 Baba Rush. Required mana is 4 burst. Deal 750% damage to one enemy. So again, very good damage dealer. Um, uh, relentless on attack. Excellent with the dragon, good in PV, PvE. She is also excellent in PvP as well. Okay, next on our bottom five is Maggie or FC Maggie. So Maggie is again very good in the dragon. She is good as well in PvP and also in PvE. Very much all around, you know, all around hero. And let's take a look at her passive. So she has man utilization three. Again, increase attack based on allies' mana count. She also has Dragonite Blessing, and she is a head Dragonite. That is why she is fantastic with the dragon. Okay. She also has um, the first Guardian passive. So the Great One grants the Great One mark of all four allies with the highest attack in the same row. Um, if an ally with the Great One mark is attacked, they gain Dragon's Blood mark once per turn excludes uh, damage from wrath so dragon blood if the mark target is attacked again while the dragon mark is active gain dragon blood plus one if the mark target is not attacked for two turns all dragon blood marks are removed and because of that we go to dragon scale once per turn upon taking damage grants a barrier to all allies 
marked with dragon blood for 10 turns okay fire strength is equal to 100 of all defense for each dragon blood mark across all allies can't be stacked okay and she has rat as well to counter so once per turn upon taking damage all marked allies marked with dragon blood will counter dealing 50 percent damage for each dragon mark on them okay that is why she is actually very very good for her S1, she has Cube Exterminate. Um, record mana is one, so deals 102 damage to all enemies. Um, very cost efficient uh, AoE spell. But her best spell would be her S2. So, record mana is three, it's a burst spell, deals 178 damage to all enemies. So, again, when you bring or you have FC Maggie with you, she actually has a lot of applications in terms of the game okay to round out our bottom half for the top 10 we have here fc gene fc gene recently was actually was actually core reversed and i did a did a what they call this did a video on how to play his skill so i'll put the link up there for you guys to see it but let's go to him in terms of being a black fate core and what was changed so he has focus fire so level one makes the focus fire mark and decreases dodge block for one route on basic attacks he has dimension leap as well and this is what was added to his kit so chain reaction when a target mark with sticky bomb is granted a barrier afflict sticky bomb mark on all enemies with a barrier okay sticky bomb if under the effect of command afflict sticky bomb mark on the enemy here that's that successfully hits the caster okay and special when the target mark with sticky bomb receives damage deals damage equal to 120 percent of barrier value and the target on the target in addition to 250 percent of own attack and remove sticky bomb mark from the target so to sum this up in a nutshell just um i highly advise you to watch the video that i just bookmarked up there um to sum this up, he applies Sticky Bomb to deal damage to the enemies which have shields. Um, bigger damage will be applied to, to, to enemies or heroes on the other side that has a barrier or has a shield. Okay, And because of this, he becomes a viable, you know, he becomes a viable replacement or a second unit um, to Iris to, or FC Iris or to FC Shell. So for his S1, it deals to 10% per piercing damage to one enemy. And his S2 is deals 255 damage to all enemies. So it's a four mana spell dual genocide. Okay, so again, he's a uh, he's a viable um he's a viable swap out in terms if you don't have FC Iris or FC FC Shell because um, of those pesky uh first guardian so again he could be viable for your pvp um he could also be viable for your pve as well but again you could really play him in your pvp tag teams okay so we have here the start of the upper half of the top half of the top 10 so we'll start off with fc baraka okay it's a bummer that you can't you can actually bring FC Baraka's Blue Fate Core, but the Black Fate Core is much more, you know, it, it's much more packed with stats because of the core memory. So that is why FC Baraka, the Black Fate Core, is actually more viable in PvP nowadays. But we'll start with his passive. <clears throat> so you have here finishing blows, attacks, and if an enemy keep takes damage and its health drops to 10% or less, gain one mana. He has Harbinger of Awakening, so afflicts, uh, afflicts mark, mark of Revenge to so an enemy that kills an enemy, an ally. This buff is removing the target to mark is killed or damaged by Harbinger of Awakening. And Awakening, King of Wasted Red, so grants heal over time that heals 20%, 25% of attack every turn to self. Increase attack speed by 25 and gains damage immunity for 4 turns when health is at or above or is at or below 30%. Okay, why I put, why I put FC Baraka here? Because right now, 
in terms of where he belongs. The Nombe has one of the most um, most devastating teams in terms of PvP, and he is one of the stars there because actually of his speed. Let's take let's take a look at at the speed of Baraka. So his attack speed is more or less what um, in in the top there. So if you just uh, minus this 125 minus 11, that's roughly around 113 base speed. Okay, so that is why he is actually touted as one of the fastest heroes and he fits well with Lenombe right now. Okay, so more or less, <coughs> he suits your team when you're bringing Lenombe along. So if we take a look again at his kit, so S1 Assassin Art, so deals 225% damage to one enemy. Resets turn if a target dies. This is actually very valuable but valuable as well early on, especially if you kill off enemies and you, t you tend to reset your turn. Okay, steals one mana from the target and grants two mana back to the Bakaru ally if the target is disheartened, which is provided by FC Rachel. And his S2 would be Madman's Flurry, deals 525% damage to one enemy. Steals one mana again from the target and grants two mana to the back row ally if the target again is disheartened. So again, he steals mana, gives fuel to your team, in which your team can, you know, can attack more frequently. The Nombe is 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 is, is, is built this way to attack relentlessly as long as they have a supply of mana. So this actually pumps up the mana of the heroes that attacks after him. So basically not only does he do the killing he also supports the other you know the other units that um get the mana because mostly the nombe teams are built one in the front and four in the back so the back row allies would benefit um from this immensely especially when he attacks first okay let's go to fc ramji so ramji is one of the top no, in in the top five black fate cores because of one thing more or less it's his ability to nullify heal so let's do the opposite in terms of skill so his s2 is actually nullifying heal for everyone on the opposite side of pve especially so it doesn't it doesn't really require um Shufraken to apply his nullify heal that is why he's very valuable nowadays very good as well with his first guardian passive and nullify heal is actually still a game changer in terms of pvp um to to, to nullify this the pesky heals of talia and gorka and whoever or who who the other healers that we have in exos heroes and also for his s1 we have touch of light so required mana is one so Again, it has Nullify Heal with only one mana. So that is why he is still in the top of the Black Fate cores in this game. So let's just go over his passive. So again, he's, he has Cleanse 3. So damage over time and debuff effects from an ally and gains one mana. So additionally, gains one mana additionally if health of the target is 20% when triggered and the other one is at 70% when triggered okay so again he has dragon he has dragon blood passive he is a first guardian and more or less he has his um barrier and he has actually his wrath so more or less again a very good a very good frontline hero which actually i've been i've, I've still been using him in pvp in some matches um because again he gives a lot of um you no know, a lot of cyber survivability to the front team as long as you build up his signature force and because his only drawback is that he's very squishy so again very good front front line uh first guardian he is good in pairing with fc iris to deal um a lot of flop flop damage or a lot of flop flop shenanigans to your enemies 
so we're nearing now the top actually we're, we're in the top three already for um for the top five we have here fc adams i've never really appreciated fc adams up until now i've never really i've really underrated this guy or this rodent for that matter for a very long time that is right why right now i've been building him tremendously to be to be able to help um team stories with uh, with my pvp team even for um even for tag pvp let's go through his passive so again he has counter to shell investigator uh, against monomos increased damage heart strike heart strike is um it, it's 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 afflicted on your enemy that has the highest hp and when you for each strike that you have there is an additional there's an additional what they call this additional effect so Increase attack speed by 20, level 1. Level 2 would be decreased defense by target by 1,000. And level 3 is deals 200% damage to all enemies upon activation. Afflicts the target with blind. So, I'm sorry for those who have been victims of our strike, including me. This is actually a big headache. Okay, But recently, he was really buffed. And aside from... His damage dealing. Let's start with his S1. So required mana is 2. It's called Crushing Shadows. When the target with Charm is taking damage over time, deals 30% additional damage. This is, again, a very powerful addition in terms of his damage. He was actually powerful already in terms of damage before. And then they add this one. Then when you go to his S2... It's more or less the same. It's a it's a it's Reaper uh, sickle. Required man is four. It's a burst skill. A single target um, damage skill deals seven fifty percent damage to one enemy. When the target marked with charm is taking damage over time, deals thirty percent additional damage. Again, what can I say? He pretty much bumped up his his damage as long as you bring Janai with him in the team. But right now, he is really a good fit with Janai, Shell, and him to round out the top three heroes for your Astoris Republic. Again, he is a must-get right now for Astoris if you want to build up that nation. So I suggest you try to build up your FC Adams now if you're bringing him in your team. Okay, another another cute little fellow in our top five would be fc morris so fc morris a lot of people have been sleeping on him a lot of people have downplayed him when his core reverse came out um you probably know some of them <laughs> and they they really they really was you know were wrong about fc morris when his core reverse came out because again Let's start with his um, with his um, passive, with his counter heart strike again, same as FC Adams. He has tempering when 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 the battle starts, increase attack of all allies by ten percent. Alone, this is ten percent damage. Then the next would be steel weapon, trigger steel weapon once around when attack hits, any attack hits, in, um, from him increase attack of all allies by 20 percent for four turns so that's 30 percent guys increase so and for his s1 he is masters tempering record minus three increase attack of all allies by 60 per 62 percent of own attack so again this little creature this cute little creature is a badass in terms of giving um additional attacks to your team that is why he is actually a mainstay in Almost all the Nombi teams that I've seen, um, except for those who have swapped him out for FC Schmidt. But again, you can't sleep, you know, you can't sleep on this guy. This guy is very powerful, especially when paired with Lenombe because of signature force. Um, he can actually be splashed with any other team as well. So for his S2, we have Blacksmith, Blacksmith's Hammer. Record minus five burst and it deals 1050% damage to an enemy. So again, packs a lot of punch. Very good support unit up there in terms of PvP. 
and you can really bring him also in your PV PVE matches but again he is best for PVE teams sorry for PVP teams and now to be able to round out the top is actually FC Annery uh, sorry FC Annie so Wandering Flame Master so this Flame Master ever since it's been a long time sh since she came out of the game and ever since she has been touted as one of the top Black Fate cores even can be considered as a gold fate core already with the skills that she gives or the passive that she gives and the damage that she deals okay let's take a look at her passive so it's manual utilization 2 to increase attack based on allies mana count mana 1 if mana count of allies is at 10 or more on own turn so let's skip unleash potential because most of you or some of you have not unleashed her potential yet so she is good with monomos so dealing damage by 20 percent against monomos with fire barrier and this is what she gives that gives her the a plus in terms of black fate cores so she is burning soul grants one ally except a caster with the fastest attack speed that is why for my team i bring along fc ready and fc ready receives this one um, damage immunity and 300% increase in critical hit for two turns okay and also gains mana three mana every round so this is actually again a top-notch skill a plus and <coughs> again she can be considered a black fate core just for this one and let's take a look at her s1 so crazy per perot the active required mana one deals one percent a hundred percent damage to an enemy afflicts target with silence for five turns so after five turns afflicts target with crazy pero that inflicts damage equal to hundred percent of current health so again i remember these are the orbs that you know that that fall off after after the five turns and her silence is actually very good terms of controlling tempo especially in pvp um especially if you want to disable the abilities of your opposite you know of, of the opposite team this is actually very good and plus the damage after the five turns so let's move on to her s2 s2 is deals 357 damage to all enemies mana mana required is five and it's a burst skill as well so Let's disregard the unleash potential, but her unleash potential actually also gives her a lot of utility. Again, FC Annie is one of the top, or if not the queen of Black Fate course. Definitely hands down. I'm not saying this because she's with Wasted Red. I'm saying this because she ha she can be swapped with any team. She can be useful also in the Numbi teams. I've seen team comps with with FC Annie, and she still works with that team. And again, hands down, best utility, best attacker in terms of Black Fate cores, uh, all around damage and utility. She can support and give your team. That is why until now I haven't taken her off. Uh, my team and she continues to help me with my wasted red team again guys so what do you think so any comments and suggestions put them down below okay uh, what do you think have i left off in this team in this top 10 black fate cores who do you who do you think i should have included and why and also guys Please subscribe to my channel this helps me a lot and this supports me a lot around 85 percent of my viewers haven't subscribed to my channel yet so please do again guys always stay safe take care this is the warden and i'm out of here